A wide top roller intake design with no sidewalls, we noticed that the cube tends to be pulled forward causing the cube to roll versus being pulled into the intake mechanism and the robot. This is because the carpet provides too much friction with the cube. So if you use a low friction surface on the bottom like a polycarbonate, it will slide in much easier to the robot. We also noticed that you want sidewalls to help control how the cube comes into the robot. Otherwise, the cube could come in at any angle, which could become problematic to how to control, lift, and manipulate the cube. Uh, you also need to account for how to use a cube if it's on its side at 13 inches, or if it's normal at 11 inches, and provide enough down pressure that the cube is pulled in, but not too much that the motor stall and you cannot pull it in. to talk about our uh, clamping intake. So this is one of the prototypes we've been working on for uh, picking up power cubes. Basically, it's really simple. There's a drawer slide. Um, I think it's a 20 inch drawer slide. We're not utilizing all of it, obviously. With a six inch pneumatic cylinder donated by PHD. Um, they have a pneumatics kit on Mark. It's super nice. Um, yeah, it's really simple. We've got High friction uh, blue nitro tread on here. Yep, it's basically the idea is that you drive up to it, actuate the pneumatic cylinder, and then honestly, I'm not holding it that hard. You've got a fairly decent control of this thing, especially if you get it to the back. Designed this and built this in about an hour and a half. It took us about an hour to figure out how to get drawer slides to get on, but once you overcame that, it's literally just gussets for two by one coming from uh, Vax Pro or Andy Mark, wherever you get them. So once you get all of the actual air components hooked up, you should be ready to go. Yeah. The PHD kit also included all these nice mounting brackets, so it was pretty simple to just plug and play. Yeah. Pretty nice to just attach and then it works. Yeah. The intake is the most important uh, mechanism after your drivetrain that will separate the teams who are good and the teams who are great. The Greenhorns RA3D team is proudly sponsored by Andy Mark, who provides us with a specialized kit to build a robot fit for this year's game. Rev Robotics, who provided us with LED components, spark motor controllers, and a linear motion kit. The RA3D team that made this entire event possible. Becker High School and FRC team of 4607 CIS, who graciously hosts us during this event and NDSU Student Government, who provides us with funding. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. So we went with this design initially because the beauty of it is it can intake without the driver ever having to do any instruction to the robot. It can intake from multiple directions and the wheels will always wrap themselves around the crate. So initially this is all contained within the starting frame. It will be like this. Once we have this powered, these will be in brake mode so the wheels will not spin and the force of the wheels squeezing against each other will keep them in place. If not, we can just add a quick release so they will. And once the match starts, we will turn the wheels and they will spring out into position. So initially, to have it to where it would always go back to this equilibrium point, we had a spring on the outside and on the inside. But once we attach the motor, this would no longer work. It would end up getting to one spot and staying there. To fix this, we replaced the inner spring with just this piece of rubbery material here that would cause it to spring back towards this inner position and put force on the crate when we are taking it in. The reason we went with these wheels and we really like them is because they provide the perfect amount of traction on the surface of the crate. So the wheels will provide the lift for the front of the crate and we'll have a back plate on the back side and this will stay within our frame perimeter so we don't have to worry about it. We'll have a, a wedge on the front so we can glide under and lift the crates. Another option for that that we might try is having some kind of material like this that's friction and we can put this in the back. So when we drive the crate in, it'll wedge into that friction-like surface and we can still lift. The problem we might have is when the crate is on its thinner orientation and 11 inches, we'll have to still figure out how to provide that traction force in the back. This is our power cube elevator. To build this mechanism, we use the elevator kit from Rev Robotics. 
To get the height we needed to reach the scale, we decided to go with a two-stage elevator. The lower portion is controlled by a red line motor donated by Andy Mark attached with a chain. For the upper portion, we used a nylon strap connected from the first stage top bar to the car which will carry the power cube. We are using a single stage climber donated to us from Andy Mark. You can see at the bottom that the elevator is driven by a VersaPlanetary gearbox geared at 147 to 1 with a 775 Pro motor. An important note is that because we are carrying 120 pounds and the elevator must travel up and down to grab onto the bar, you cannot use a ratchet and must find another way to stop the elevator. When we compare the two elevators, we see that the Andy Mark costs $95 for single stage elevator carriage guides, while the Rev is $480 for a two stage and $260 for a single stage. And with Rev, everything needed to make the elevator is included, while the Andy Mark kit only has the guides and no frame material. The Andy Mark reaches a 7 foot climbing bar with 2x1 aluminum tubing, weighs around 16 pounds, and took around 2 hours to assemble. It has bearing support in all directions to minimize friction which makes it smooth, even with significant loads applied from any direction. The bearing tracks contain roughly a quarter inch of contact on a 2x1 aluminum rail. This does raise the possible concern of the carriage falling out under extreme load conditions, however it has not shown any signs of doing this yet. The rev elevator extends up using two stages to roughly 7 feet, with the elevator frame taking about 90 minutes to put together and weighs in at around 11 pounds. Groove bearing tracks inside the rev extrusion provide support in all directions, once again making the motion smooth with large loads from any direction. V-groove bearings track in the middle of the rev extrusion and cannot be displaced even with significant loads. 